I tried out Hyperland for one month, and in that time frame, I've had ups and downs, so let me tell you all about it. Alright, but what is Hyperland? For those of you who don't know anything about Linux, or any of you Linux users who have been living under a rock, Hyperland is a Tiling Wayland compositor with the looks, according to the official website. Now some of you more literate users might be thinking, isn't it called a Tiling Window Manager? No. Tiling window managers like i3, Awesome, or BSPWM all use the X11 server. However, Wayland compositors like Hyperland use Wayland, of course. The difference is that Wayland is a protocol, not a window server. i3, Awesome, and BSPWM don't do compositing. When you first install i3, assuming it's with a fresh install of Arch Linux, you will notice some screen tearing. That's because you didn't install a compositor to do vSync or you didn't enable the tear-free option in your x11 config file, but you also use a compositor for fancy effects like rounded windows, transparency, which you need to do for the fan favorite, drumroll please, blur. However, these Wayland tiling window managers already ship with compositing. You can do blurring and rounded windows on Hyperland. In fact, the windows on Hyperland are rounded by default. Anyways, now that you know a bit about what the fuck I'm going to be talking about, I'm going to start yapping about the topic of this video, which is my experience with Hyperland. Installing Hyperland was easy. Since I use Arch Linux, by the way, Hyperland was officially supported, so all I needed to do was install it through Pac-Man. There is a Git version on the AUR, if you feel like compiling the newest version of Hyperland out there, but I didn't feel like going through hours of compilation, and also my laptop would catch fire. This is the thing I love about Linux. You can make it look the way you want it to look. If you switch from Windows and you want it to look exactly like Windows down to the exact detail, sure, go for it. If you miss using the operating system for Fisher-Price computers, aka Mac OS, sure, you can reskin it to look like that. In fact, I see a lot of rices that go for the Mac OS look and feel. And to be honest, macOS does have nice aesthetics, but I'm getting off topic here. The ricing experience was really nice. The documentation was amazing. Now to be honest, every piece of software has good documentation, but that's not the point. Everything that I wanted to do was found in the official Hyperland wiki. The default Hyperland configuration file is amazing. All you gotta do is drop in a status bar, comment out the auto-generated option to remove the annoying notification, and done! You have an r slash unix porn ready Hyperland setup. Now, I did do more than just that. I set my blur effect, set some key bindings for things such as screenshotting and restarting waybar. Why did I have a key bind for restarting waybar? Because I used my pre-existing waybar config from when I used Sway. I ended up going back to i3 though. See, Sway and Hyperland use different variables, so I had to change the modules from Sway to Hyperland. And I had to change the focused variable to active, because that's what Hyperland does different. I also installed Wofi which is the first time I've ever used Wofi. I've used Rofi when I used i3 and ran it on Sway using X Wayland, but this time I decided to use something that was natively supported on Wayland, and I also decided to try something new. I liked how you theme it. It's just like Waybar with the CSS. This is my strong point since I learned web development because I was bored. Great, now I have a nice rice. Now, how is using Hyperland though? Now I'm not going to lie and say that Hyperland ran flawlessly. There is this issue that has plagued me when I played Doom through GZ Doom and PR Boom Plus. In GZ Doom, I can't use my mouse in the menus at all, and this isn't a Hyperland problem, it's a Wayland problem, because after installing KDE Plasma 6 to test and running it on Wayland, I had the same no, issue there. Funny thing is that when I used to daily drive KDE before switching to i3, I've never had that issue before. 
So I don't know if it is some Wayland package that I need to install to get this to work or something, but I don't know. Alright, so uh, here's the uh, mouse issue in the menus to uh, show you what I mean. Uh, see, see, I, 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 cannot, I cannot click options. I, hey, I, I, I can't change the set. I literally, I, oh, oh, there we go. Okay, what about mouse? Uh, no. Oh, okay. I, I can go into sound options. That's what I want. What if I, what if I want mouse options? What if I want to customize my controls? No, no, I, 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 I can't. Oh, hey, now this is the wrong thing. No, I can't. I'm moving my mouse. I'm moving my mouse. See, look, I'm moving my mouse. I will look at this. Okay. And it's going in the opposite direction. Hang on, look. I literally can't do anything. I can shoot. I can do that. I can... I can switch weapons. See? But I... Can't... Seem to do anything else. Does the trackpad work? No, the trackpad doesn't even work at all. Another issue that I had was that for some reason, Firefox slowed Hyperland down to a crawl. Everything would be insanely slow on Hyperland if Firefox was on the screen. The only workaround was to run Firefox in floating mode, and then the issue would go away. This issue persisted for days, and then all of a sudden the issue fixed itself. Weird, but okay, I'll take it. Now, the Doom issue isn't a Hyperland issue, but I still don't know what in the world caused Firefox to be the second Google Chrome and slow everything down like that. Some of you that know me for my Doom Bring Your Own Class videos might be wondering why I left out Xandronum. That's because Xandronum didn't have any issues at all. It worked right out of the box on Hyperland without any issues. Now some of the pros are that Hyperland feels very polished. There is effort put into this project, and some of the stuff that Vaxery made for Hyperland is amazing. He saw that there were issues with XDG Desktop Portal WLR, and decided to make a better version of it that he could use for Hyperland, and the animations are nice on it. I can even use Hyperland on my Chromebook without issues. Hyperland on an Intel Celeron N3060 dual core processor, and you can use it on this palm sized laptop that uses an Intel Celeron N4120 CPU, so Hyperland can run on lower end hardware. And the thing is, I still had fun improvising on my configuration of Hyperland. I have been constantly trying out new things on Hyperland because why not? On my main laptop, I remapped caps lock to the super key. And then I decided to map caps lock to control, just to try out the thing that HHKB does with caps lock. While I may have had some issues with Hyperland, these are probably due to something that I may have missed in the installation process, so who knows? I may go to the Wayland side, as I can do everything else that I like to do there. And it's a dynamic tiler that uses the same layout that I do when I manually tile windows on i3. But anyways, I enjoyed this challenge, and I really look forward to what the Hyperland project puts out in the future, and I hope you enjoyed this yapping video.